you're an Avenger. Have I killed you before? Kang has defeated Avengers before. Many people do not realize how powerful this line is right here. Kang has literally killed other Avengers before. We've even heard that there's a Thor reference in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania with Kang hinting that he's killed the one with the hammer before. We even know that He Who Remains, who we met in the Loki finale, actually collected relics of Avengers that he's killed before. We could actually see Iron Man's helmet in the concept art for He Who Remains' room. In the actual finale, it's kind of blurry so you can't really make it out, but the concept art is very clear. He collected an Iron Man helmet along with other relics. And since the Kang in Quantumania and He Who Remains are different variants, this shows us that multiple Kangs have defeated multiple heroes. And there's a reason for that, and that reason is Kang is is pretty much unkillable. And it looks like we have discovered a new plot point about Kang in the MCU that makes him a way bigger threat than we could have ever imagined. You see, Kang is already incredibly unkillable for the most part in the first place. Let's go back to Loki, where Sylvie and Loki tried to murder him and he just kept teleporting away because he knew their every move. And even if one Kang didn't know every move, Physically fighting him is incredibly hard as well due to his technology. You see, Kang has been to the future, he's been to the past, and he's been to other universes, and he's taken technology that he's found that was developed way in the future. He's able to harness mass amounts of energy and use it as a weapon. He even has the power of telekinesis. But let's say you somehow manage to get past all of that, and manage to get close enough to him to actually physically fight him one-on-one. -on -one. Well, from there, he has a shield around his body that is made out of pure energy that is pretty impossible to pick. Penetrate. And to top it all off, what we have learned is that if you manage to do all of that and come close to defeating Kang, you might have the Council of Kangs to deal with. The Council of Kangs is exactly what it says. It's several variants of Kang coming together to form a council. Now, this council is pretty bad. Of course, it was formed by a variant of Kang who was threatened by different versions of himself from different realities. So he forms the Council of Kangs to destroy all of the others, all of the other Kangs, that is. Ones they deem not worthy of the name Kang. But make no mistake, they are a huge threat to the Avengers, because if there is a Kang that they do find worthy, they will protect him. This has happened before in the comics and in some animated versions. Just when the Avengers think they've won and have defeated Kang, other Kangs show up. Because even chained here, stripped of my armor, I am still the conqueror, and I will not rest until you are crushed beneath my boot. You wish to test my might, villain? Then come, let us... Hello, Kang. The Council of Kangs. These Avengers. We have seen them appear in various timelines, only to be eliminated. But in yours, their power grows. In time, left unchecked, these so-called heroes could threaten all Kangs across all of time. The Council of Kangs has sworn never to interfere in another Kang's timeline. Because of the danger posed by your Avengers, we make an exception. Deal with the Avengers, Kang, as we have. So here's where a huge problem in Quantum Mania can occur. If Ant-Man defeats Kang. And Kang doesn't even have to die. Most of us assume Kang will live because we have Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars coming up, but keep in mind, there are infinite variants of Kang, and we're in the multiverse saga, so it doesn't have to be this particular Kang we see in Quantumania who is the true variant that we'll see in these other films. And the Kang that we see in Quantumania doesn't seem to be at his full Kang self, so to speak, so he's vulnerable without his time devices and power for them. That's why he'll originally need Ant-Man's help like we hear him asking for in the trailer, where he says you'll do what I ask or your family will suffer. So he's not at his full self in this film, so what if Ant-Man and the rest of them 
defeat Kang. What happens with the Kang of Councils if a Kang is defeated by the Avengers? In a multiverse where it's very clear that Kang can defeat Avengers, seemingly with ease since we've already seen two different variants have done it, so if a Kang is defeated, it might concern the Council that a Kang variant was defeated by a team that they have all beaten before. This presents a whole entire new problem for the Avengers. Some insiders have hinted that the Council of Kangs are going to be a part of the MCU. They are going to be a thing. So it is also possible that the Kang in Quantumania is already a part of the Council of Kangs. That line that he states in the trailer, you're an Avenger, have I killed you before, could mean that our Kang went to help out other Kangs deal with the Avengers in their other timelines. And make no mistake, the Council of Kangs already does exist and was actually hinted at in the season finale of Loki. Most didn't know what it was at first, but now it seems very apparent that the four statues, one of them being smashed, in the foyer of He Who Remains Base are the Council of Kangs, statues dedicated to the members of the Council of Kangs. Now, we know that you could never really trust a Kang, and we know that one was broken, so this could have been a variant that betrayed the others by trying to have everything himself. But these statues right here are proof that the Council does exist. This means that Kang is a way bigger threat than we could have ever imagined. You see, the closer we get to Quantumania, the more we see how things are getting connected. And there are some key things that people have either missed or forgotten about, about what He Who Remains told us in Loki. And for those who may not be entirely clear about this, He Who Remains is Kang, a variant of him. He even says he's been called many names, and one of them was a conqueror. He came to kill the devil, right? <laughs> Well, guess what? If you think I'm evil, well, this way. Till you meet my variants. So basically, he is Kang the Conqueror. And here's where it gets really scary for Ant Man and the Avengers. He Who Remains stated that in the beginning, when the multiverse was first discovered and Kangs were making contact with each other, they were peaceful at first. Then eventually, some Kangs started to fight each other. But if the best of the best or the worst of the worst Kangs teamed up, then who could stop them? Well, what if the not so peaceful ones got together and formed a pack or a council to rule over all of the universes, the multiverse themselves? They would take out anyone who would get in their way, and that includes Kangs, but also Avengers. You see, as you saw in the animated clip, Kangs can monitor other timelines as well and can intervene if they choose to do so. So this basically makes Kang impossible to kill if he has allies. And on top of that, in the comics, one of Kang's powers is him being able to transfer his consciousness into another Kang, which basically allows him to live forever. In fact, many people think that He Who Remains hinted at this in the season finale of Loki because he tells Sylvie as he's about to die, see you soon. That could be the case, but he's also probably referring to his variants. Now, typically the council doesn't interfere. However, they have made expectations for the Avengers before when they fear the Avengers will get too powerful. So when the Avengers get too strong, the council interferes. They probably have already done this in many different timelines. And Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel Studios, has already confirmed that we are going to see multiple variants of Kang in the multiverse saga. He even confirmed that some are going to be fighting against each other. So not only do the Avengers have to deal with one Kang or multiple Kangs that are fighting by themselves, but they'll also have to deal with the Council of Kangs. So Kang isn't really just one person. He's kind of like an entity, an entity that can't really be killed. So the Avengers really can't kill him because the others will come. The only way to really kill Kang is to kind of erase him from existence, which is what the heroes might try to do in Avengers Secret Wars. Because we pretty much know how the ending of the Kang Dynasty is going to go. Kang is going to win. It's pretty much going to be like Infinity War, where Thanos wins. So the Avengers are going to realize that they simply just can't kill Kang to get rid of him. This is why they can't really defeat him. The only way to do this is to erase him from existence. So we'll see if that's what is going to happen. We'll see if that's the key to Avengers Secret Wars. But in the meantime, let us know what you think about this in the comments down below. Leave all your thoughts and your theories. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to stay up to date on the latest MCU news. You can always follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.